Today we will cover HVDC and facts. Uh, I am requesting to all of you, please uh, mute yourself so that it will not disturb our this today's talk. And at the last we will have a question and answer session so we can discuss. So we will start with the contents of the presentation that is we will cover today what is HVDC and facts then objectives objectives of HVDC and facts then types advantages and applications and I will also try to cover uh, what is the present scenario of uh, HVDC and facts uh, in India so we have uh, many times we don't know how many projects are there in India which work is going on in HVDC and facts so we'll cover that also uh, for general awareness so these are the constraints of AC transmission we know that when the this is the graph between distance and power transfer capability whenever distance increases when we talk about the AC transmission as the distance increases there are the issues of voltage and stabilities whenever distance increases the power handling capacity of the AC transmission or AC line uh, reduced so that is the issue with the long longest transmission when we transmit the power with AC but that is not the case with the DC transmission because DC is independent of the distance so that's why in the world there are the, some HVDC links which are transmitting power over a distance of more than 3000 km also there is the longest link in China they are transmitting power over a distance of 3000 km with the HVDC technology that is a 1200 kV DC so these are some of the there are thermal limit of the conductors that is also one of the limitation so whenever we transmit power through the conductor then the because of we know that surrounding temperature and every conductor has its capacity or its temperature limit whenever we transmit power then there start the heating so there are thermal limits also while transmitting power uh, with the AC as well as DC but DC we have seen that it is a independent of the distance for any distance you can use uh, DC transmission then you can load your line up to the surge impedance loading means it is the maximum loading of the that uh, line you can load up to its thermal limit means beyond that the conductor will snap it will break so that is the ulti highest limit that is surge impedance loading so these are some of the constraints now how HVDC and facts is helpful uh, regarding uh, to overcome these are these constraints like a uh, voltage improvement then stability improvement that is possible with the fax technology as well as HVDC so whenever we transmit with the AC system there are some of the issues uh, like uh, we have steady state power transfer limit that is a normal power rating of any line then voltage stability limits are also there we have certain range of voltage if you take the case of 400 kV so it uh, it should be operated between 380 kV to 420 kV like that otherwise uh, there are issues of under voltage or over voltage then there is a transient stability limit whenever there is a sudden fault on the any line so in that condition there is a drastic change in current and voltages of the line so that should be maintained during that condition also the stability should be maintained so that is a transient stability then inter area oscillation suppose there is a northern region and southern region so there uh, there are inter area oscillations so because uh, whatever changes or sudden uh, fault in one area can be reflected in the other part of that grid or we can say regional grid so that inter area oscillations can be avoided or minimized with the help of HVDC and facts then reactive power we know that there is an issue of reactive power so reactive power management is one of the uh, uh, greatest issue because uh, to manage the overall power system we have to manage the 
frequency and reactive power that is we can say ultimately voltage so that is also uh, one of the limitations in ac system but that can be overcome by the hvdc and facts then we have bulk power transmission so hvdc is suitable as well as facts by uh, adding some series compensators you can <coughs> increase the power handling capacity of the line then load flow control is also <coughs> sorry <coughs> load flow control uh, is also possible then sub synchronous oscillations the frequencies which are we can say <coughs> below 50 hertz so that can create the sub synchronous oscillations and that is harmful for the generators so that also can be taken care by uh, fax and hvdc then black blackout risk cascade tripping major blackouts so that during that condition also hvdc and fax plays important role and also frequency control so these are the issues addressed by the hvdc and fax technology so we'll start with the hvdc technology we know that <coughs> there is a power generation then that power generation is at low voltages then we step up those voltages at ehv level then we have uh, this uh, hvdc systems which convert ac into dc that dc is transmitted over a distance <coughs> sorry with the help of a transmission line or uh, we can say cables and then again at the inverter station dc is again converted into ac and that is fed to the ac system again there is a distribution system which uh, uh, again convert that uh, voltages to the distribution level and supply to the finally to the consumers so this is a uh, overall our power system and hvdc plays role in the particularly transmission but nowadays the hvdc is not limited only for transmission uh, today uh, we know that there are the means uh, major motivation towards the renewable energy sources so uh, that is the we can say wind farms or solar uh, solar uh, plants that can be actually con connected with our grid by using something different hvdc technology that is a uh, hvdc based on voltage source converter which is hvdc light or hvdc plus so these are the some of the technologies in hvdc now uh, we are we will have a brief idea about projects in hvdc uh, hvdc projects in india so these are some of the projects in india we generally know that is riyan dadri we talk about or chandrapur padge hvdc link but they are they are existing 11 to 12 existing uh, hvdc lines and also some of the lines which are coming that is uh, some of some of HVDC lines are under construction. So these are the some of the lines. This is Dadri Rihang, then Vindajal back to back. We have some back to back links. Like uh, we can say this this link is uh, Barsur Lower Sileru, which is connecting this western region with the southern region. Means uh, inter regional grids. We have five inter regional grids that is uh, eastern, western, northern, southern, and northeast. So those are connected with the back-to-back -back HVDC links as well as uh, this point-to-point -point HVDC transmission also. Mm -hmm. So there are so many links uh, in India and we have special HVDC link that is uh, this is Northeast Agra which connects Northeast region that is Assam to Agra in uh, Northern region. So this type of HVDC is a multi-terminal HVDC, uh, ultra high voltage DC with the multi-terminal feature. So India has made one record in the world that India is having a multi-terminal HVDC link that is ultra high voltage link. China has also plus minus 800 kV but they don't have multi-terminal feature. But we have multi-terminal feature. One end is at, uh, that is at uh, Assam. Second is as Alipurdur, Alipurdwar. So that is in the eastern part. And another is at Agra which is in the northern so this is the special HVDC link so there are some uh, some of the ratings and all those things are given so later on also you can go through it 
I will share this presentation and some of the HVDC links uh, are under progress uh, like uh, this Raipur Puglur is a 6000 plus minus 800 kV ultra high voltage DC it's a line committed at converters this is special type of HVDC where voltage source here in the second phase they, they are having plus minus 320 kV so that is a Puglur Trishur VSC HVDC generally all HVDC whatever we seen in India all are based on thyristor technology but this tech, this HVDC link based on voltage source converter that is IGBTs so first time in India uh, power grid is uh, installing this HVDC link based on voltage source converter uh, because of its uh, so many advantages so this is a brief overview of all HVDC projects in India and some of the projects are undergoing like uh, Champa Kuruk Kshetra 2 bipole out of that three poles they have completed one pole is under construction then ultra high voltage DC Raigar Rai Puglur is there one pole completed one bipole is under progress then 2000 megawatt plus minus 320 kV voltage source converter HVDC that is Puglur Trishur it is under construction and one pole will likely to complete in December 2020 so this is the special technology first time coming in India that is voltage source converter based HVDC and we have already back to back converter station which connects inter-regional grids so that uh, that are already old uh, more than 25 years old so now their upgradation has already started so this is the present scenario of the HVDC projects in India so we will have beef uh, idea about uh, a, how HVDC works so this is a generator then we are having here a transformer it is not a simple transformer it is a converter transformer then there is a rectifier then there is a DC line then there is an inverter again converter transformer and there may be load or some AC system here so this is a uh, we can say single line diagram of uh, any HVDC converter station and this its neutral connection neutral part is connected either to earth or sometimes it is a metallically that is the conductors of the other pole is used as a return path so in HVDC how HVDC works first of all in the AC system here one AC system and other here at another end there is a another AC system so these AC systems first we have to from this we have to charge these walls that is the first uh, operation in HVDC first we have to backfit the walls we, there must be some voltage across the thyristor walls so backfitting is most important when we take the case of thyristor based technology so these buses must be energized then converter transformer will energize that will produce voltage across the converters thyristor walls and then thyristor walls whenever uh, voltage across anode and cathode reaches to uh, more than 12 volt then it starts conducting and then current starts flowing from rectifier to inverter provided that rectifier end voltage must be higher than inverter end voltage so this is the uh, here we apply voltage and then again it is converted uh, that AC is converted into DC when we use thyristor based technology then there is a direct conversion of current that is AC current is converted into DC current and again at inverter side there is that DC current is converted into AC current this is the direct conversion when we talk about the thyristor based technology or current source converter based technology but in case of voltage source converter technology or IGBTs there is a conversion of voltage directly and indirectly of current but here there is a conversion of current directly and indirectly of voltage that is the difference and here are some of the filters which are provided in AC side as well as in DC side also because we know that whenever converter operates it produces harmonics 
and those harmonics we have to eliminate from the system for that we have to provide the filters to AC side as well as DC side and that may be active filters or passive filters so this is a general idea about the HVDC transmission then uh, this is a typical structure of monopole converter station here AC switch add we have then there are converter transformers near to this and then here we have thyristor walls this thyristor wall is an indoor structure thyristor walls are suspended or hanging to the ceiling so this is the structure like that and in some of the recent projects they are coming with the uh, we can say outdoor walls there is no necessity to hang just you can put the walls on the ground itself so that is the new technology and we are having a harmonic filters to eliminate the harmonics uh, on this these are the passive filters and sometimes shunt capacitors are used to provide additional reactive power and there are thyristor walls and now this whenever we apply AC so for the operation of the thyristor walls or for conversion from AC to DC we want reactive power and that reactive power is supplied by the capacitors of the RLC filter in this way uh, 50 to 60 percent reactive power is needed that's why we have to provide filters at the AC uh, to the AC side and these are the converter transformers and uh, these are the thyristor walls then this AC is converted into DC and this is the DC switch art in DC switch art we have to again uh, apply here filters to eliminate the harmonics as well as some of the DC equipments like uh, there is a DC CT uh, then DVD DC voltage divider and isolators and circuit breakers are only provided in the neutral part this is the neutral part of the DC side so only circuit breakers are provided in the neutral side and not on the main pole because there is no requirement of DC breaker on the main pole as thyristor wall itself act as a breaker whenever there is a fault so that will not feed it through the thyristor walls thyristor will be open during fault condition so the fault will be isolated but to connect with the neutral or ground we want breakers and for a, to de-energize de system to work on the system we want breakers in the neutral only and these are only simple breakers conventional breakers only then one special type of breaker is used that is a MRTV metallic return transfer breaker and after uh, eliminating the harmonics from the DC side we are having this DC line and this is the first tower after that there are overhead towers or it may be underground cable also so this is the typical structure of the monopole converter station and there are some of the equipments so majorly we divide uh, HVDC equipments in three parts one is wall hall then we are having uh, this AC side and another is DC side so here wall hall in the wall hall side we are having thyristor walls then uh, DC bus arresters so we are having uh, bus arresters uh, here parallel to this there are the bus arresters here also we can say uh, here bus arrestor means simply a lightning arrestor for the protection of the thyristor walls then wall cooling system is also provided to it so this is the these are the equipments in wall hall then AC side these are the converter transformer these are generally three winding transformer its star primary side it is grounded and secondary splitted into star and delta why star and delta because to cancel out the uh, that is fifth and seventh harmonics if it is a six pulse converter so the first harmonic odd harmonics will be fifth and seventh so that will be cancelled out when we apply delta and star configuration with the 30 degree phase shift so fifth and seventh harmonic created by this six pulse converter will be cancelled out by the other in this way we don't require filters here uh, for the fifth and seventh harmonic we want filters for 11 and 13 like that 
so simply by adopting this star and delta phase shift we are actually uh, eliminating the harmonics and we know that lower the order harmonics that is uh, more dangerous for the system and it is a uh, more filter size is required for that to eliminate it then uh, after converter transformer this this is the isolator this is circuit breaker then this is the uh, ct current transformer then there is again isolator ac filter and this is cvt capacitance voltage transformers so these are the equipments in the ac side what about dc side in dc side we are having smoothing reactor smoothing reactor the purpose of its to smoothen the dc output because we know that whenever there is a AC, dc conversion so there is there are the spikes that is con some of the ac contents present in the dc so that will be eliminated by the smoothing reactor then we are having uh, these filters to eliminate the harmonics so even harmonics are eliminated in the dc side and odd harmonics are eliminated from the ac side uh, that depends on the formula uh, harmonics pn plus minus 1 that is on the ac side and pn harmonics that is on the dc side where p is a pulse group and n is an integer number starting from 1 2 3 and so on so for the 12 pulse converter the first harmonic will be 11 and 13 here it will be eliminated and here 12 and 24 harmonics will be eliminated in the dc side then we are having a dvd that is dc voltage divider to measure the dc voltage it is not so simple to measure the uh, dc current and dc voltages so for that uh, some different equipments we have to use so here dc voltage divider that is a it's a resistive type that uh, divider is used to measure the voltage and dc ct to measure the current so in this way uh, these are the some of the equipments which measure the voltage and currents and of the dc side and fed to the control system and based on that uh, control system will take the action so this is the structure and neutral is uh, taken out from here so that neutral is connected to the electro station which is uh, more which is away from the uh, terminal station so that must be uh, beyond 20 kilometer and it must be away so that there should not be any return current uh, that come from the dc and it will damage the earthing of the substation so that's why it should be on at the remote place so that is the neutral so this is the uh, these are the substation equipments and there are some of the modes in HVDC that is bipolar mode when we operate two poles then one another mode is monopolar mode monopolar mode means uh, there are two modes possible in monopolar you can use the conductor of one pole uh, that is uh, for power transmission and other other pole of the other other conductor or other pole can be act as a return path so that is a monopolar metallic return and homopolar mode people say but that is not practical and that is not used anywhere in the world so that is only theoretical concept so these are the substation equipments now we know that whether it is HVDC or facts there are the basic devices power electronic devices used these are thyristors and GTOs IGBTs or IGCTs so we know that thyristors are used for the bulk power transmission it operates in the range of frequency range of 50 to 60 hertz then GTOs operates uh, less than 500 hertz frequency IGBTs operates on uh, uh, more than 1000 hertz sometimes it operates on to 2000 to 3000 hertz also so what we are achieving by implementing the this power electronic devices in the power system we are varying the power uh, we can say that is the parameters of the power system so that is the uh, we can control or vary p v that is a uh, active power reactive power voltage frequency like that means we can play with the power system parameters by using these flexible systems 
फ्लेक्सिबल इलेक्ट्रॉनिक डिवाइसेस सो मोस्टली इन एनी एच वी डी सी वेन एवर देर इज बर्ल पावर ट्रांसमिशन वी गो फॉर द थारिस्टस एंड अप टू थाउजेंड और फिफ्टीन हंड्रेड मेगा वैट इन एच वी डी सी वी गो फॉर द आई जी बी टीज एंड समटाइम जी टी ओज ऑल्सो सो मोस्टली थारिस्टस एंड आई जी बी टीज आर यूज फॉर द दिस एच वी डी सी एंड फैक्स टेक्नोलॉजी so these are the power most important power electronic devices but the thyristors and igbt igbt is having a uh, power we can say power handling capacity or its rating is less as compared to thyristors but there are so many benefits as it operates beyond the 1000 hertz so you can you can play with any power system parameters more than 1000 hertz but here we have limitation of 50 to 60 hertz only here for the thyristors you must want some reactive power but here you can uh, have reactive positive reactive power negative reactive power that is absorption or uh, supply of reactive power or sometimes on zero reactive power you can operate the igbts so there are so many benefits of igbts but the power handling capacity as compared to thyristor is less so these are the building blocks of the either you talk about hvdc or the facts uh, based on these devices hvdc has uh, some different uh, types like uh, hvdc classic where you use thyristors then capacitor commutated converters where you use thyristors walls converter transformer and in between that you should you connect series capacitors so that hvdc technology is known as capacitor commutated converter technology then we are having voltage source converter technology which is known as hvdc light or hvdc plus hvdc light is a we can say it's a voltage source converter igbt based technology and these two technology is based on the thyristors and uh, the major benefit of hvdc light or voltage source converter technology you can independently control active and reactive power so that is the major advantage it has black chart capability no short circuit restriction there are so many benefits i will not go into the detail of this because uh, we have to concentrate on fax technology so these are the types of hvdc uh, now uh, interconnection with the ac system we know that power handling capacity of ac depends on sending end voltage into receiving end voltage divided by the distance of that line that is the we can say reactance and then uh, sin alpha 1 minus alpha 2 that is the power angle so it must be less than 30 degree to maintain the transient stability so these are the whenever we talk about the power in power transmission in ac so we depends on uh, that depends on the sending and voltage receiving and voltage and distance of that line and also the power angle so these are the some of the factors which govern power handling capacity of the ac line but when we talk about the dc system uh, dc system has only we can say power handling capacity depends on its voltage dc voltage into dc current so that is the benefit of the uh, hvdc system that it depend doesn't depend on the this sending end or receiving end voltage or distance x or power angle so that that is the benefit that's why hvdc is a we can say more stable system uh, because of the these uh, controllers rectifier inverters as we operate this so that's why this is more we can say stable system and uh, for this uh, we know that there are some of the six pulse operation how actually this uh, rectifier operation took place whenever there is a when we talk that is three phase ac is converted into dc but how it gets converted for that i have uh, just a simple simul uh, one uh, animation so i will try to show you it's so just it is a basic idea how uh, we convert uh, ac into dc so passive rectifier operation here just see here uh, this is the x axis and this is y axis 
दिस इज अ आर फेस दिस इज अ वाई वी आर सीन बाय ग्रीन हियर एंड दिस इज द बी ब्लू सो हियर वेन वी सी अबो दी एक्सिस देर इज अ वन हियर वन इज मैक्सिमम एंड अनदर वेव इज मैक्सिमम एट द लोअर एंड वेन एवर ऑन द निगेटिव साइड ऑफ दिस वाई एक्सिस so we can say that this phase is conducting that is the r phase and then we can say that uh, the y phase is conducting from the lower side because of the high voltage uh, in the negative side so in this way uh, these are the operations how ac is converted into dc so this is the just a, uh, to understand it how which which phase is involved uh, as per the magnitude of the voltage that's only uh, here shown okay this is just a simple thing now we'll see uh, the base basic uh, transition diagram because whether it is hvdc or facts the mostly used uh, device that is a thyristors so thyristors having this uh, we can say transition diagram from off to on on to temporary off and temporary off to uh, again off so uh, just a simple idea is here uh, whenever a gate uh, we can say voltage across anode and cathode anode and cathode more than zero or it is on positive side then gate pulse is applied then off condition thyristor can go into the on condition from on to temporary off because whenever three phases are there r y b so whatever magnitude of that phase is whether it is high or low according to that those thyristors will have to go in temporary off condition so that depends on the i uh, current through the anode and cathode which is less than i holding current and then temporary off to again on condition but that depends on the duration so that is the temporary off duration which uh, must be less than t off so i will not go that much in detail then converter operation and output we know that by adjusting the firing angle alpha from 0 to 90 degree uh, this uh, rectifier operation is possible and from 90 to 180 degree then uh, inversion operation is possible so the, in this way by controlling the firing angle from 0 to 90 degree there is a operation of rectifier and there is a operation of inverter from 90 to 180 degree so this is the basic then applications of hvdc applications uh, of hvdc it can be used for long distance transmission whenever uh, but it is not necessary that for always you should go for <coughs> longest distance by for the hvdc so <coughs> you have another option also that is a uh, ac with the facts whenever uh, you have to transmit power over longer distance then you can go for the ac technology with with the fax technology so by adding the compensation you can go for the longer distance by using fax technology but whenever we talk about cable transmission beyond 40 to 50 km hvdc is uniquely suited because we know that in ac more than 40 to 50 km there is a addition of reactive power and that reactive power will restrict the flow of active power so because of the charging current of the cable so for that whenever beyond 40 to 50 km we have to transmit power so with the help of cables then hvdc is uniquely suited asynchronous links whenever we have to co connect uh, different frequency regions uh, with each other then we have to go for hvdc their fax is not suitable for that then power control and modulation in ac system that is possible with the help of hvdc 
and integration of renewable energy sources nowadays by using voltage source converter technology uh, re generation is con now they are connecting with the grid by using the that vsc based technology so these are the applications of hvdc technology some of the advantages of hvdc that is uh, it can be used for the bulk power transmission over a longer distances with the loss very less loss when we transmit uh, 750 megawatt power or 1500 megawatt power on bipolar link so the power loss uh, for 752 kilometer line is only 1.5 to 2 percent that is the minimum loss whereas when we transmit power with the ac 400 kv the losses are in the range of 4 to 5 percent so that depends on the aging factor of line also then asynchronous systems can be connected by hvdc power system stability can be maintained Con you can control the power on the hvdc link with the high speed which is not possible in ac system then grid operations whenever a uh, load dispatch center performs some operation so hvdc is a uh, helping for the grid operation because uh, by adjusting the power on the HVDC link so you can control the parameters of the uh, our grid and also by switching the filters on and off AC side filters you can adjust the reactive power in the uh, in the grid so these are the benefits uh, for the uh, we can say grid operations then it acts as a firewall against grid disturbances and uh, there is no skin effect or proximity effect uh, as it is a DC transmission then distance is not limited by stability point of view we have seen that uh, it is independent of the distance corona effect is less significant as compared to the AC system then environmental benefits uh, because uh, it takes small right of way or corridor for the transmission or if it is underground there is no issue of right of way and no contribution to the short circuit level and that is also one of the means fault level of the any substation cannot be increased when we go for the thyristor based technology but when we go for uh, voltage source converter technology short circuit level increases so these are the some of the advantages of the HVDC so in brief I have uh, introduced HVDC technology but our main concern is uh, with fax technology so fax is a uh, it's a flexible ac transmission system so uh, there is a generation transmission and distribution mostly this technology is used for the transmission but nowadays uh, like a d statcom that is a distribution statcom is used for the distribution side also and for to that is a power quality issues improvement uh, that uh, some reactors capacitors so that can be used now definition of fax and fax controller as per IEEE the definition of uh, fax is it's an alternating current transmission system incorporating power electronic based that is uh, IGBTs or uh, we can say thyristors and other static controllers to enhance controllability and increase power transfer capability so the most uh, the aim of uh, fax technology to increase the power handling capacity of the line as well as stability and reliability also so this, uh, this is uh, some basic definition then uh, fax controller uh, these are fax controllers are the devices which are connected uh, in uh, to the line in series shunt or sometimes series series or sometimes sh series shunt like that so these are the typical arrangements of the fax controllers so one f uh, practical thing we will uh, talk about fax we know that uh, in series we know uh, in series current is same and in parallel voltage is same so ultimately what we are doing uh, in fax technology practically whenever we add some device in series so actually we are varying the voltage 
any series connected device uh, it actually uh, vary the voltage by varying the voltage you are adjusting the parameters and in shunt compensation you adjust the current as the voltage is stable or we can say constant so that is the only we can say fundamental aspect is used for the facts so facts uh, already we have seen that is the dynamic controllers because of the controllers uh, and these uh, devices power electronic devices it is the flexibility to the in uh, power transfer capability then stability security of the power system reliability so and power quality these are the benefits of the fax technology whenever we use fax device in our power system uh, we will get we get sured that whenever some fault is there either it is transient nature fault or permanent nature fault so that will taken care by the fax device uh, so it will maintain the stability of the power system then uh, reliability uh, with this fax technology reliability increased line cannot be tripped immediately if there is no fax device so that line may tripped because of some fault but by using the fax technology so that fax device itself will try to stabilize the system and power quality we know that power quality can be improved so that by adjusting the reactive power in the power system uh, you can uh, uh, and eliminating the harmonics as well as so you can uh, actually uh, enhance the power quality of the power system then uh, by which parameters uh, we generally control in fax technology that is a series impedance that is uh, whenever we add some series device either it is capacitor or inductor in series so we are varying the impedance then shunt impedance we vary the shunt impedance also uh, that is the thevenin's impedance uh, that is the equivalent impedance then we vary current voltages and we damp the oscillations what is oscillations oscillation is uh, whenever there is a fault in the power system so we know that if it is, if it is a heavy nature of fault heavy current flows and it remains for the longer distance or more distance more time so what will happen so it will create the oscillations means the angle between rotor and stator will go on increasing or also we can say that is sending in and receiving in voltages that power angle also goes on disturbing or in increasing and because of that oscillations uh, oscillations will create and because of oscillations if it is not controlled within time then our system get, may get collapse so this is the we can say uh, these are the some of the parameters which we actually control in the fax technology then fax uh, what which equipment we use we already seen that is uh, igbts uh, gtos or mosfets or we can say thyristors so these are the devices we generally use and by using these devices uh, we can load any line any line up to its thermal limit up to, up to its rated capacity you can uh, transmit the power up to its rated capacity or we can say up to the thermal limit also you can load the line by using the fax device and also by using the facts uh, you can enhance the power handling capacity of the old line or existing line uh, up to its certain limit and if you talk about the history of fax technology so it is invented by dr narenji hingorani he is a indian fellow and uh, uh, actually when he pass out uh, from india he work with the uh, bses Bom bombay supply electricity uh, that is supply company was there here in mumbai so if for some of year he worked with that and later on he went to us and he did his phd and uh, he research in the this field uh, at epri that is electrical power research institute 
and uh, he developed this technology that is the faxed flexible ac transmission system and first time in the world they have used this uh, installation at a cj slat substation in oregon state at arlington so this was the first uh, ins installation uh, of this fax device and later on uh, mm -hmm. uh, that that they have developed uh, by epri that is electrical power research institute uh, like our cpri here in india we are having cpri central power research institute so they are having epri so with the help of uh, that uh, uh, power administration general electric company gec they have developed this 500 kv three phase 60 hertz fax device first time in the world so this is the brief history and nowadays uh, all over the world people are using or many transmission utilities are using fax technology in india also we will see later on uh, we, we india also using the fax devices in our grid so what are the objectives of uh, fax technology we already seen that is a <coughs> power transfer capability can be enhanced then power flows can be controlled by these fax devices uh, then up to the thermal limits we can load the any line then uh, cascade trippings that is uh, what is by cascade tripping if one generator trips so because of that uh, generator tips and uh, frequency will collapse and later on all the generators one by one will get collapse or it gets separate out from the power system so that is a cascade tripping so those cascade trippings can be avoided by using the fax controller because of fax uh, you can try to improve the frequency voltages like that uh, active power reactive power in the power system so that the grid balance or stability can be maintain then oscillations uh, these are majorly oscillations are very harmful for the power system because of oscillations if it is more severe oscillations then there are uh, we can say damage to the generators also damage in the power system also many equipments gets damage because of the, because of the oscillations so those oscillations when these are in the initial stage that can be co controlled by the fax devices so in this way we can say that uh, these are the some of the objectives of the uh, fax devices now we have three generations of the uh, this fax technology so the first generation was a mechanical switch devices like uh, we use circuit breakers here to isolate capacitors or inductors uh, generally in uh, our 400 kv substations these are uh, structures these uh, reactors are used uh, that is a uh, only uh, breaker is connected to that so these are the mechanical devices to control the reactive power and capacitor banks are also used uh, at uh, distribution side most of they use capacitor banks so these are the mechanical switch devices but second generation was you application of thyristor based technology so by using the thyristor uh, bridges or walls you can say uh, you control the active and reactive power or you connect the inductors and react uh, capacitors so that was the second generation and now the third generation is a very advanced technology so that is a voltage source converter based technology what is the difference between these two we know that thyristor is a is a line commutated converter we can made it on but we cannot off it so when it uh, naturally commutate then it can be off but that is not case with the igbts igbts can be made switch on and off as in when required in the range of 1000 hertz more than 1000 hertz 2000 to 3000 hertz also so that's why uh, this is more flexible system that is igbt application of igbt it's a more flexible that's why it's a third generation advanced technology used for the fax controllers so function of fax and hvdc uh, this we know that two ac systems can be uh, please mute yourself and someone is i think unmuted 
so this is one system this is another system uh, please ask to mute them who is uh, unmuted bhagyashri bhagyashri theli please unmute your mobile so these are the two ac systems so here uh, mixed technology also can be used uh, you can use fats as well as hvdc parallel in the power system here we have fax technology that is a series compensator is used here here shunt combination of this uh, these are two ac system connected also you connect one back to back hvdc to this systems and also one point to point dc transmission so that's why uh, by using the mixed technology or hybrid technology we can say fax and hvdc so you can control uh, this uh, many parameters of the power system like uh, uh, you can back to back having it is mainly for inter regional power transmission and stability point of view back to back uh, uh, hvdc is used then point to point is for uh, bulk power transmission uh, over a longer distance then you can go for it and stability also and this is also for power handling capacity more power handling capacity and stability these are the fax devices so in this way uh, we can control frequency power on the power flow on the link so and the power oscillations damping and oscillations in any area either to low side or this uh, generation side or in any region that can be controlled by the uh, pod that is power oscillations damping that is possible in hvdc as well as fax controllers also so a similar thing is shown here also but here we have used voltage source converter based technology uh, in previous uh, we have used thyristor based technology here we can use voltage source converter based technology plus a combination of three also you can use uh, this is a fax technology then we are having uh, these are the uh, we can say uh, this is a voltage source converter based technology and this is a current source converter based technology igbt this is igbt based and this is we can say it is a uh, thyristor based technology so in this way a mix combination of these three also you can use now advantages of uh, fax devices or fax technology we can transfer the power without adding new transmission line suppose i have uh, i have to transmit 1500 megawatt power so uh, to transmit that i have to, uh, i must have uh, 3 400 kv 3 400 kv lines for that so each line can transmit uh, it, it it should be double circuit line and it can transmit 250 250 on each circuit double circuit that is a 500 on each double circuit but when i when i add fax device or fax technology in any on any transmission line so then my power handling capacity of those two lines will enhance and there is no need of third line so that is the again saving in terms of we can say material and cost of installation will reduced so that is the advantage of the fax technology then transmission cost minimized because the, as the distance increases we have to go for hvdc or we have to provide compensations so transmission cost uh, minimize when we go for the fax devices smooth steady state and dynamic control uh, we get uh, smooth operation during a normal condition and whenever there is a fault in that condition also all the controllers of the fax devices will take care taken care and will give the dynamic control to the system then active damping of the power oscillations in the power that damping mode is already always it kept in on mode so that whatever dampings are there oscillations are coming that will be damping out damp out by uh, these controllers then reliability increases uh, so these are the some of the already we have seen all of the things optimum power flow power flow can be uh, maximize on the link then applications of facts steady state voltage stability we can achieve 
power flow can be controlled with the help of HFAX devices. Damp, we can damp out the oscillations in the system. Gen, uh, reducing generation cost. How we can gen, uh, reduce the generation cost? As if we, if we decrease the losses in the transmission, ultimately we are helping in the reducing the generation cost. So that is also indirect benefit of the fax technology. Then uh, HVDC link, uh, we can use fax parallel to HVDC uh, lines. So that is also one of the benefit. Uh, in deregulated market, that is open access to all. So the fax technology plays important role uh, regarding its benefit like power quality, uh, then uh, power handling capacity, very less loss. So these are the uh, we can say in deregulated market it is most beneficial and uh, it can be interconnected with the renewables we know that renewables are fluctuating sources so they can create more uh, stability issues in the power system but whenever you connect fax device in to parallel to that uh, bus where the gen uh, renewable energy is connected or coming on that bus so again you can uh, increase the stability of that system and also you can store the power in some extent like a statcom statcom has a storage capacity you can store in some extent the power and that can be utilized so in this way uh, facts helpful in some extent to storage the power also then steady state voltage stability uh, that already we have seen now we'll see the types types of fax compensation or fax devices so it just uh, depends on the configuration for exam point of view uh, it is very easy to remember i have tried to summarize all these uh, uh, controllers so that you can remember easily also uh, there are connection point of view we it talk about the fax devices that is a series compensation when you connect in series of line it is a series compensation when you connect in shunt then it is a shunt compensation then you can connect series series so that is third type and another is series shunt like that so these are the some of the uh, combinations possible in the fax devices so just you can remember from this uh, if it is a series combination then it is of uh, fsc of uh, that is a fixed uh, series co capacitor or compensator thyristor control switch capacitor then we are having series shunt compensation uh, unified power flow controller uh, if we have shunt compensation static wire compensator or uh, statcom also so these are the mainly two devices which are uh, shunt connected these are shunt tens series shunt upfc uh, there is also IPFC also that is also series series combination so that I will cover later on so these are the some of the fax devices again uh, we can just you if you will remember this only chart so the, then you will come to know idea and you can write in your exams just by remembering this summarization of the devices so this is a series in series uh, we are having a thyristor control switch capacitor then uh, we are having static synchronous series compensator here yes means series so here uh, static static synchronous series compensator that is triple sc when fax device connecting in shunt so that is known as static bar compensator SVC or statcom statcom is static compensators and if you connect series shunt one one is in series and other is shunt so it is known as unified power flow controller UPFC and when we connect in series series it is a interline power flow controller that is IPFC and uh, just we have summarized here thyristor based fax devices controllers that is TCSC TCSC then SVC etc and voltage source converter VSC based are triple SC 
statcom upfc and ipfc these are the voltage source converter based so it is easy uh, with this chart we can it is easy to remember similarly uh, again you can divide same thing is shown here same thing is shown just added you to this i want to say about series series combination that is possible with the help of hvdc back to back converters and hvdc vsc back to back converters so that is also one of the series series devices that you can connect uh, when we talk about the hvdc otherwise all are these are the fax devices and this is the most important chart to summarize all these controllers fax controllers it is a just will have a brief idea statcom with a storage system statcom with a storage system which parameter is controlled if you remember this chart it will be very easy to write in exam statcom just with the storage system it is having some battery capacity system or something superconducting material that that is used for the statcom to storage the power so it control q and then static wire compensator like svc tcr tcs trs so that control q you can observe one thing here these are shunt compensators and we can remember that in shunt you can control the q parameters control that is a q you control reactive power in the shunt combination and you control active power in the series combination very easy to uh, remember so shunt shunt compensators actually control the reactive power in shunt means in shunt what uh, shunt we control voltages but in series we control current so current and this active power has a we can say uh, relation uh, next to that there is a triple sc then tcsc thyristor control series capacitor it, these are three whatever connected in series we can just remember that these are the active power controlled this control the active power but when we talk about this uh, uh, we can say series series or series parallel so then it is we can say that it is a p and q both very easy to remember for shunt q control for series active power control and for series shunt or series series you can control p and q both and fax parameters which parameters can be controlled by the devices that are also mostly common but we know that whenever we talk about shunt actually it control the voltage and also wire compensation damping oscillation transient and dynamic stability and voltage stability similarly for this also same thing whenever we talk about shunt if you remember for one automatically you can remember for other and for the series what we control in series we control current we can we damp oscillations oscillation damping transient and dynamic stability is common voltage stability is common so in this way you can remember this so this chart is very much important for our exam point of view you can write many things from this you can draw the diagram you can write this which parameters that fax device control then for which uh, that all these things you can remember from this now we'll talk about series compensation in series uh, we know that generally we connect uh, series capacitor so that uh, by varying xc you can actually adjust the voltage uh, you can adjust actually current by adjusting uh, sorry voltage actually we are controlling by adjusting the xc that is capacitive reactance in series because current is uh, is a, we can say common so example of this series compensation is a triple sc tca sr ipfc t ssc and tcsc so these are the series compensators again in series some of the uh, that is already we have seen so that is how we can connect the devices triple sc that is static 
सिंक्रोनस सीरीज कॉम्पेन्सेटर्स स्टैटिक स्टैटिक सिंक्रोनस सीरीज कॉम्पेन्सेटर ट्रिपल एस सी दिस इज अ ट्रिपल एस सी इट इज अ स्टैटिक एंड स्टैटिक मीन्स यू आर यूजिंग थारिस्टर्स वेन इट इज एक्टिव इट मीन्स दैट यू आर यूजिंग आई जी बी टीज सो इट इज अ ट्रिपल एस सी दैट इज अ स्टैटिक सिंक्रोनस सीरीज कॉम्पेन्सेटर एंड दिस इज कनेक्टेड इन सीरीज हियर इट इज कनेक्टेड विद द दिस इज द प्राइमरी ऑफ दिस ट्रांसफॉर्मर एंड दिस इज सेकेंडरी यू हैव ब्रेक द लाइन एंड यू हैव कनेक्टेड प्राइमरी ऑफ द ट्रांसफॉर्मर इन सीरीज विच इज कपल्ड विद द सेकेंडरी एंड यू हैव कनेक्टेड द डिवाइस ओके सो दैट्स वाई इट इज अ स्टैटिक सिंक्रोनस स्टैटिक सिंक्रोनस सीरीज कॉम्पेन्जेटर मीन्स दिस डिवाइसेस दिस डिवाइस यू हैव कनेक्टेड इन सीरीज देन यू हैव थारिस्टर कंट्रोल सीरीज कपैसिटर दिस इज दिस इज बी दैट इज अ थारिस्टर कंट्रोल सीरीज कपैसिटर एंड स्टोरेज इज ऑल्सो प्रोवाइडेड टू दिस देन वी हैव दिस अनदर डिवाइस दैट इज अ दिस इज एक्चुअली थारिस्टर कंट्रोल सीरी सीरीज कपैसिटर and uh, this is triple sc with a storage same thing is there but storage is provided to here so that is same technology here you provide thyristor controlled thyristor controlled series capacitor that is tcsc and uh, then you have d that is a thyristor controlled series reactor thyristor controlled series reactor so this is the again series type of series compensators so you can remember by from their configurations so thyristor control series compensator these are mostly used in india also we have used uh, two two in the two projects we have used this thyristor control series capacitors uh, so benefits of uh, thyristor control switch capacitor you can control as the capacitor is connected in series you uh, it, you can control the current you you can control the current then uh, damping you can damp the oscillations and uh, transient and dynamic stability that is also there voltage stability also provided and fault current limiting whenever there is a fault current so that can be limited that current can be limited by the cap series capacitors so that is also benefit of the thyristor control switch capacitor then uh, fix series capacitors you can connect uh, in the line you can connect this uh, uh, this series capacitors also that is not flexible we can say fix capacitors you can connect uh, these are the simplest series compensation like uh, it it can help to increase the power transfer capability and uh, that uh, influence load flow in the parallel transmission lines whenever there are some parallel lines to it so that will uh, create some uh, uh, impact on the or we can power handling capacity can be enhanced system stability can be enhanced so this type of uh, is uh, used in power grid that is a uh, this type of fixed series capacitor then limitations of fixed series capacitors so in uh, that there there are some of the limitations so that that is not uh, exam point of view that is not uh, because i have seen your syllabus so in that already uh, basic uh, they are they will ask for basic so these are more i have taken here that is uh, limitations of fixed series capacitors because what is the limitation it's a fixed so we don't have that much control it has certain limit only uh, if it is provided with the i this igbts or uh, we can say control flexible control then it can its capacity can be enhanced so it has limitation of its range only then thyristor control series capacitor this is also thyristor control series capacitor so there are two projects uh, in india where power grid has installed this project one is as raigad raipur one line so that is a 40% fixed and plus minus 
और माइनस फाइव परसेंट डायनामिक सो दैट फिक्स्ड एंड डायनामिक दे हैव यूज्ड देन पूर्णिया एंड मुजफ्फरपुर लाइन नंबर वन दे हैव अगेन प्रोवाइडेड दिस एंड इट हैज अ फीचर ऑफ पावर ऑसिलेशन डैम्पिंग देन लोड फ्लो कैन बी कंट्रोल कॉम्पेन्सेशन हायर एंड वेरिएबल हायर एंड फिक्स्ड एंड वेरिएबल कॉम्पेन्सेशन कैन बी प्रोवाइडेड on better capacitor protection due to thyristors because of the flexibility thyristor protection is all can be given because whenever some fault is there uh, in capacitor itself so that can take care taken care by the thyristors it will open during the fault so in this way this thyristors can be protected then uh, damping of uh, that is uh, sub synchronous resonance by tcsc so that uh, resonance uh, can be damped out that is a uh, we can say lower order harmonics uh, that can be uh, damp 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 out by the fixed series capacitor or thyristor uh, tcsc so these are the uh, some of the features of tcsc power oscillations whatever oscillations come that else can be compensated how it can compensate actually whenever we use thyristor control switch capacitors they inject counter uh, uh, suppose such oscillations are coming like that so this will inject exact opposite to that so that it will counter balance and the oscill oscillations will be uh, damp out so this is the method of uh, injecting the oscillation counter oscillations then shunt compensation here we connect the capacitor or reactors in shunt generally uh, this is the pc means point of coupling where you connect l or c uh, in shunt or parallel so these are the some of the configurations possible when we connect uh, these devices in shunt so the first is a statcom that is static compensator these are the statcoms where uh, igbts are used and here uh, the dc source is connected to that then we are having a statcom with the storage capacity here capacitor capacitor was used here storage additional storage was in uh, storage storage is interfaced with the statcom uh, like a battery energy storage system superconducting magnetic energy storage and large dc capacitors can be used for the storage of the shunt connected controllers then we are having another controllers that is thyristor control reactor thyristor switch reactor thyristor switch capacitor uh, filters so like that many combinations are possible uh, in here with the shunt connected devices then uh, when we connect inductor in shunt that is a inductive shunt compensation when we connect capacitor in shunt that is a capacitive shunt compensation in inductive uh, inductive shunt compensation vr is when when we use inductive shunt compensation when receiving end voltage is higher than sending end voltage so that is known as ferranti effect and to avoid the ferranti effect we must have to connect series inductors so that Uh, this can this possibility can be avoided that is receiving in voltage will be maintained uh, lesser than sending in voltage so there we use inductive shunts but whenever there is a receiving in voltage is lesser than vs that is sending in voltage then capacitive shunt compensation we have to used so these are the shunt capacitive compensation shunt inductive compensations like this so these are the statcoms tcr tsc uh, msc that is a mechanical switched capacitor statcom so these are the shunt compensations we used then uh, svc static var compensator that are used uh, in india at four locations kanpur 400 kv bus having capacity of plus minus 140 mvr then kan Controlly, controlly, four hundred kV bus. Uh, it is a 
400 MVR plus and minus capacity it has 300 MVR plus minus that is new one for 400 kV bus and Ludhiana 400 kV bus uh, that is a 600 plus and 400 uh, minus like that so these are the static compensators used in India at different locations there are so many benefits of uh, that static work compensator that is stabilized voltage control dynamic reactive power improved transient stability uh, then uh, typical response time is 30 to 40 millisecond because of the thyristors devices uh, the response time is very less some of the limitations are there slower it has a slower response than statcom now we'll see the some uh, basic about the statcom that is static synchronous compensators so statcom uh, we are having a, it is a shunt connected device and this is a transformer here connected these are the thyristor uh, walls and uh, here capacitor is connected and this is a control of this firing control and this is a statcom controller and this is firing control so based on the inputs from whatever uh, getting from the system that is a VM that is PCC voltage point of common coupling voltage is sensed and here current is sensed and uh, in this way current uh, flowing through this uh, this branch that is sensed that is given to the statcom controller and IC dash is produced and according to IC dash the firing angle firing pulses will be given to the IGBTs and according to that that much current will be again inject into the system so in this way uh, this statcom uh, maintain the uh, voltage stability so again uh, benefits of this uh, statcom increase in transmission line capacity can be increased steady state voltage regulation dynamic voltage support it can give dynamic voltage support to from the prevent of system collapse then power oscillation damping power oscillations can be damped out by using the statcom so these are the some of the benefits then combine series and shunt one one device one device is connected in series and other in shunt so th such such a, a device is known as it's a thyristor control phase shifting transformer or thyristor control phase angle regulator this such type of arrangement and this is a UPFC unified power flow controller where you use statcom one one is a shunt connected device and another is series connected device that is triple SC when combination of these two is used and in between that there is a DC link uh, this DC link there are the capacitors connected so in this way when we use the combination of series shunt uh, controllers then that is known as UPFC unified power flow controller other controllers that are also possible that is thyristor control voltage limiter then uh, TCVR like that but that is not I think in your syllabus reactive sources we are having a static wire compensators and sometimes there is a diff uh, that that difference is given in your syllabus that is static wire compensators and statcom so here in svc what is the difference generally here used thyristor power electronic devices and here igbts are used uh, here large amount of reactive power compensation can be given but here static or compensation uh, as compared to this uh, uh, lesser reactive power compensation can be given uh, uses fixed or switched capacitors here it is a we can say it's a just like a conventional generator without the rotating parts it acts as a generator like statcom is act as a generator but has no rotating parts because it can operate in the 360 degree its uh, vi characteristics is 360 degree so that it has a more flexibility than static wire compensators so this is a comparison then you can uh, 
compare the passive and active uh, these comp compensators then uh, about the space svc require more space and this uh, statcom require less space is a compact technology statcom is a compact technology here you use thyristors here we used igbts these are the some of the difference between svc and statcom so this is the uh, about 700 meter square area is required for svc whereas for statcom uh, only 300 uh mm square mm near about 50% less than 50% area required for the construction or installation of the plant this is a comparison steady state reactive capability we know that when static work compensators either it is tcr thyristor control reactor or thyristor switch capacitor so that it this tsc operate in the capacitive Uh, that is uh, this side that is capacitive current in it injects tsc and it injects inductive current that is tcr injects inductive current uh, these are limited vi characteristic but when we talk about the statcom it has a complete it covers inductive current as well as capacitive current also and statcom can uh, actually operate in 360 degree where active reactive power may be positive both positive both negative one zero or one is positive one other is negative like that means flexibility is more for the statcom so that also you can mention again there are so many uh, factors uh, that also later on you can refer this i will share this presentation Uh, in svc uh, these are the some of the this is just connection is shown here this is a transformer which is a 400 by 38.5 kv generally all the fax devices are connected at low voltage level so that uh, the cost cost will get reduced and just by adding the uh, this power uh, that is a step or uh, step down transformer step up transformer you can connect to any system any voltage so that is uh, generally these are the devices connected this is svc components uh, this is svc controller for uh, how the control system is designed for the static wire compensator these are the statcom components and statcoms are used in multi level also and that technology is known as multi level converter based statcoms so that is different technology and this is the world's largest installation in india uh, first time in the world we are uh, miss in india we are using make made in india uh, that is uh, our here india made technology that we are uh, is, we have installed plus minus 300 mvr statcom at 400 kv substation at aurangabad solapur and satna so these are the three statcoms we have installed in india so these are the some of the details of uh, those projects these are already installed so these are capacities and all those things are given here uh, that 400 kv uh, level that uh, these statcoms are connected and uh, here uh, they have given two uh, 150 mvr statcom two of 125 mechanical switch reactors and 125 mvr mechanical switch capacitors so these are the some of the this is the actually structure of that project these are the dynamic reactive compensations that are used and uh, these are the modules statcom that is igbt modules are used here they have connected it is in delta connect, delta fashion statcom connected in delta fashion so these are the actually how this a delta they have made the delta connection of the modules these are the sim modules of the statcoms and this is the how statcom improves the uh, this voltages so that here it is shown by adjusting the current that is of statcom ic so you can 
control the voltage system voltage like that these are the statcom controllers how this statcom is connected with the system power system that connections are shown here and these are the statcoms in india uh, that is a uh, already we have in the western region aurangabad satna solapur uh, these are the some of the technical details of that in northern region also we have lucknow gwalior nalagar southern region also we have some statcoms and in eastern region also we have some of the statcoms means india is the country where we have used already tcsc as well as statcom svc that already we have implemented in india so this is the satna substation in madhya pradesh where they have used uh, this uh, this is the layout uh, how this uh, the structure is there uh, like capacitor banks then uh, switch gear is there here switch gear these are the statcom containers then uh, statcom building room is there cooling system this is the cooling system wall cooling system of the uh, that statcom similar look similar to hudc uh, similar arrangements are there cooling system and all those things it's a plus minus 300 mbr statcom at satna uh, this is the main controller of that system controller there are generally two controllers one is main and other is redundant controllers are used these are the hmi means human machine interface this is a scada system to interact or to control the parameters of the or we can say operations of the statcom so these are the uh, this is the scada system uh, this is the vi characteristics how statcom controls the power uh, voltages this is the wall cooling system of that this is very similar to hudc wall cooling system uh, this is transformer statcom transformer which connect uh, with the grid then uh, coupling transformers is there circuit breaker these are the circuit breakers used these are the disconnector isolators are used so these are the statcom reactors and uh, now uh, here today we talk about uh, this uh, hudc and fats and uh, when we take the use of this uh, both the technologies uh, in our power system and now today there is a era of uh, micro grids smart grids and super grids so the role of this hudc and facts is a uh, very crucial because whenever we have to uh, our power system should be very stable and there should be the bulk power transmission so hudc uh, provided this bulk power transmission even facts also and we get the stability so in the era of the smart grids and super grids hvdc and facts is playing very important role and now there is a concept people are thinking that uh, we should connect uh, already many countries have had started uh, connecting their power system to the neighboring countries like argentina brazil us canada then we india also connected with the bangladesh now bhutan also that is connected with us uh, again we connect, we are going to connect with sri lanka by with new hvdc link so in this way whole world or uh, complete world is trying to make one grid so there may be in future it is possible that all this uh, all countries will get connected by one grid so that will be the formation of international grid so that is only possible because of this fax and hvdc technology because we know that all many countries have their different frequencies and uh, there is a stability issues are there power deficiency many stability constraints own grid coding is there so by using the hvdc and fax uh, controllers 
definitely this future is possible so there might be the there era that now the communication system is connected like that we in future we may connect internationally at for the power sector also so these are the some of the conclusions of today's uh, presentation that we have uh, efficient control then power handling capacity that is uh, enhanced by hvdc and fax devices then uh, we we can control active power reactive power current voltages in the power system and because of that system our power system getting too much uh, stable and in grid operations also this hvdc and fax technology is helping to grid managers uh, that is a load dispatch centers to manage the grid and uh, there are so many benefits uh, that is uh, in any operating condition in any type nature of fault that is transient or nature of fault permanent nature or during dynamic condition of the power system hvdc and fax controllers plays very important role so in this way we can say that hvdc and fax controllers is a really future of our modernized power system so thanks to all of you and now there will be the question and answer session so uh, now you can unmute yourself and there is one uh, we have one institute industry technical forum for student there is a one another group and for faculty members there is another group many uh, institution in india are connected in this group we are here in this group we are having technical webinars and we are having discussion on different topics of power system and for students also we are helping uh, in some extent for their opportunities and all those things so you can join you can send a request on whatsapp or you can call or send an email and you can join this forum so uh, now we will have a question and answer session uh, you can unmute yourself and if you have some queries you can ask hello sir If you have some queries, you can ask. Students, anyone want to ask the question regarding the subject or any practical question? Hello. Yes. Ha. Uh, which are the sir? कवर दिस थिंग्स here we are having converter transformer so converter transformers are actually specially designed transformers these are not like a, our power transformer like step up or step down these are actually isolation transformers you know that as what is the transformation ratio of isolation transformer it is 1s to 1 so here just uh, to connect with the ac system we have some isolation required uh, ac and between ac and dc system so converter transformers are designed like that so it should provide isolation between ac and dc system as well as we know that inherent nature of the these uh, thyristor walls whenever we use suppose this is six pulse converter and this is another six pulse converter and the harmonics produced in the ac side are pn plus minus 
So if you take the value of n is equal to 1 and p is equal to 6, so the first harmonic will be 5th and 7th harmonic. So 5th and 7th harmonic produced by this 6 pulse converter will be cancelled out by the, the other 6 pulse converter as it is connected in star and delta. Because we know that in star and delta there is a 30 degree phase shift. So converter transformers are designed like that. It can naturally can cancel out the lower order harmonics delta and star because of the 30 degree phase shift. These are specially designed transformer. It acts as an isolation transformer having ratio 1 s to 1 and its primary is grounded but secondary is not grounded and it is connected one is in delta which is connected to the upper six pulse converter and another is connected star winding which is connected to the lower six pulse converter and uh, the speciality of these transformers is actually uh, their insulation their material is some means very special they, while designing these transformers very special care is taken for this their preciseness and all those things. So converter transformers simply I can say that converter transformers are those transformers their name suggests something. It helps in the conversion process. Actually whenever we think that if it is a DC is coming like this and it is converting into AC, DC cannot be directly converted into AC because the output from the converters is not perfectly sinusoidal. But whenever it passes into the windings of the converter transformers, then it gets converted into purely sinusoidal. Otherwise, we will not get purely sinusoidal output. That's why converter transformer plays to produce sinusoidal waveform also. So that is also one of the benefit of the converter transformers. Uh, thank you, sir. Okay, thank you. My contact number is also given, so later on also if you have some doubts or if you want some project guidance or your seminar, uh, if you want some data, I am working in state load dispatch center. Previously I was in HVDC Padge terminal station and EHV substation also at Padge. So whatever data if you want practical from field, I can definitely share with you. So you can later on also contact. Anyone? Anyone else want to ask the question? Anyone? Anyone? Okay. I want to ask. Uh, can you tell? Uh, you are not audible. Can you please repeat? Uh, can you tell us? Uh, more of information about commutation failure in HVDC? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Commutation failure is a that type of fault in HVDC. See, why it is called as commutation failure? We know that thyristors are line commutated converters. Means we have seen that when we apply AC voltage through the converter transformer across the walls, when then the voltage across anode and cathode uh, it becomes more than zero that is positive voltage will develop across anode and cathode it means that when you apply AC voltage then and then DC voltage will produce means these thyristors are line commutated converters means when you apply line voltages to the thyristor walls then and then it produce the output but when there is a fault suppose this is an AC system Suppose here it is a fault, it is fault, then what will happen if it is a RYB phase system, suppose there is a fault in the on the R phase. So what happens during fault, current goes high and voltage reduced. So because of that whatever R phase voltage goes to this uh, wall, R phase voltage, that will be in the disturbed condition. Because for the conduction of the walls, 400 kV by root 3 voltage should be applied. Then and then it can produce uh, that is DC voltage which is higher than 0. So when the one phase voltage is dropped down because of the fault, 
because of the commutation failure then how, what will happen then that reference voltage it will not get to the that particular r phase wall and because of that it will not conduct and there is a mismatch in the bridge ryb phase there is a bridge there is a mismatch in the voltages and then system will come to know that there is a something abnormal actually system will come to know because of ct and cvt these signals directly goes to the control system at that moment itself system come to know that there is a fault in the ac side and that ac side fault is known as commutation failure means the the there is a disturbance in the reference voltage is known as commutation failure and during this condition thyristor walls try one attempt if voltage restored if it is a temporary nature fault voltage will be restored uh, if it is voltage restored then it will try to balance the system but again there is a continuous fault then system will trip the poles so that is the action taken during commutation failure got it have you understand it thank you sir okay thank you thank you sir thank you anyone want to ask the question okay i think we can conclude our session if nobody want to ask any further questions okay we will conclude our today's session then uh first i will request every student to switch on their cameras we have to take the screenshot students are requested to turn on their camera we have to take the screenshot Can you stop the sharing your screen? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. I'm stopping. It. Yes, now it is stop. Okay, sir. someone from the student take the screenshot of the participant we have to keep the record so aditya or nagesh take the screenshot for the student participant okay okay uh, shraddha can you give the vote of thanks yes ma'am yes <laughs> now i am good shraddha to give the vote of thanks as our session is concluded today for today okay ma'am thank you uh, good morning everyone uh, my name is shraddha uh, so today's uh, today's uh, lecture was uh, very informative and uh, useful for us so we totally enjoyed and uh, learned a lot about hvd and facts so thank you so much sir for uh, giving your valuable time for us Uh, i also thanks our department for uh, arranging this uh, guest lecture for us thank you so much uh, i also want to talk two minutes uh, i am also really thankful to all of you for uh, attending this uh, session on hvdc and facts and also to the faculty members uh, and uh, to sir and your institute that uh, as you have given this uh, very golden opportunity to me so i am really thankful to all of you and uh, whenever you i have share the contact details uh, you can uh, take it and whenever you want some help definitely you can contact and this uh, lecture will be also uploaded online so that also you can later on also you can watch it so thanks to all of you thank you sir now we can conclude our today's session thank you sir thank you so our today's session is over uh, thank you to every participant and sir once again okay thank you ma'am thank you thanks to